Welcome to the Nova Confederacja's debate, Poland and Germany in a changing world. Our guests will talk about the geopolitical shift and the uh, point of view of Poland and Germany into this uh, topic. Uh, this debate is organizing thanks to the Foundation for a German-Polish Cooperation. Uh, let us know in the comments what do you think about the uh, debate, what, uh, what is your point of view. Uh, share the, the discussion and like the video. Enjoy. Jarosław Walkowicz, uh, thank you very much for organizing this debate and inviting us uh, to it. Uh, I believe, uh, I think I speak for myself and for all uh, the panelists. We have a great panelist on this debate, Poland and German in a changing world. Welcome to the panel, Dr. Beata Górska-Winter. Hello. Hello. She's a great expert on international security and defense uh, issues, uh, Afghanistan, missile defense, NATO, AI, uh, European unions, everything what has uh, uh, with uh, security and defense policy is something to do. This, uh, she is the great expert and lecturer of uh, University of Warsaw Center for Europe, Dr. Bata Górska Winter. And with us is uh, Cornelius Ochman, co director of the Foundation for Polish German Cooperation, a great expert on relation uh, between. Between uh, Germany and Russia. Hello. Hello. Uh, Paweł, uh, Dr. Górska uh, Winter is in Warsaw. Uh, Dr. Uh, Director uh, Cornelius is in Warsaw as well, but in Szczecin is Paweł Beirent, PhD candidate at the University of Vienna and uh, um, uh, the expert uh, of the Michał Boim Institute of Asian and Global Studies. Hello to Szczecin. Hello. <laughs> And in Rotterdam, in the Netherlands, is Jonas Print, uh, head of uh, networking. It's like a foreign minister at uh, German Russian Youth Initiative. This is an association which is celebrating this year 10 years anniversary. Right? Congratulations. Thank you very much and good evening, everybody. Our debate calls Poland and Germany in a changing world. So it's a huge uh, topic and uh, we're talking in a very challenging uh, times. And let's start with the geopolitics is happening a few uh, hundred kilometers from Warsaw on the Belarusian Polish uh, border. Mm, uh, and let's talk about uh, uh, Polish and German um, uh, strategy to solve this uh, crisis. Uh, Dr. Gurska Winter, do you see uh, uh, more cooperation between uh, Poland and Germany to solve this issue, this uh, crisis, and do you see more disappointment? <clears throat> well, definitely we need more cooperation. Uh, my general assessment of the crisis is that uh, we are approaching the end of the crisis, so that's the good news, definitely. Uh, after a quite coordinated action uh, from the EU, and, but also from the US and from the UK, and we see that it was quite orchestrated in a good way. Uh, so uh, Lukashenko, and also after a Merkel phone call, which is uh, here in Poland considered quite controversial move uh, for many reasons, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the crisis is approaching to the end. Let's let's hope it is. Yes, uh, but uh, and, uh, but anyway. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, I see uh, a complete lack of cooperation between bilateral cooperation between Poland and Germany. Uh, actually, uh, only today we have information that uh, uh, representatives uh, from uh, of our of our government met some uh, German counterparts to discuss uh, details. Uh, but uh, all this declaration from Germany, especially uh, coming from Merkel, that uh, she's uh, Reuters gave this information, what actually was uh, um, uh, during this phone call, yes, what, what was the substance of this phone call. So uh, we learned that um, uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel uh, 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 offered uh, some uh, solutions, yes, and uh, definitely it was not consulted with Poland. And uh, even if we consider that it is kind of bilateral issue between Germany and Belarus, because most uh, of these people are uh, on, on, on the Belarusian side, and Germany may be willing to take some of these people, like uh, we have a number of 2,000, that maybe Germany will uh, finally accept uh, part of this, uh, 
a group uh, to to Germany. Yes, uh, uh, some kind kind of humanitarian corridor, as, as they call it, which is quite misleading, but uh, let's stick to this uh, expression. So uh, it, it should have been consulted with, with uh, Polish government, and it wasn't. So uh, I think that today it's a good start because we, we see that uh, talk started. So that's a, that's a good beginning for further solutions, uh, which are, I mean, undertaken uh, in cooperation, not uh, just a unilateral decision. If you talk to Lukashenko, you legitimize this uh, his regime, uh, says uh, Prime Minister Morawiecki. Uh, is it something? What would you what would you say as well? Uh, this is about um, uh, calls between Angela Merkel and uh, Alexander Lukashenko. Uh, no, I don't think uh, it's a uh, uh, recognition. Uh, uh, I'm quite aware that uh, Chancellor Merkel is, uh, I mean, uh, treating the, the whole issue quite personally uh, because finally it was her uh, who invited, yes, who made us uh, a, a call that uh, migrants are welcome in, in Europe. So uh, I can imagine that for her is quite a, a personal, not even the political, but personal um, feeling of uh, being obliged, yes, to, to resolve the, the issue. I don't think it's recognition. Uh, if we are looking for a parallel, and the parallel is, of course, uh, uh, in Afghanistan, when we have Taliban government uh, in power, uh, effectively, and we are thinking what to, to do with all the humanitarian crisis, which is looming, we, the winter is uh, approaching, and the situation is worse and worse. And still, uh, we have to talk to Taliban uh, about humanitarian assistance. And uh, it doesn't mean we recognize the government. So this is this formula of uh, engagement without recognition. And uh, I believe this is the same formula is uh, was implemented here. Although uh, I have to underline that probably I'm the only expert in Poland who are thinking uh, this way. Uh, most of them are uh, against uh, any calls to Lukashenko and uh, against giving him a helpful hand in the whole in the whole story. But uh, I think that uh, humanitarian needs uh, must be addressed. And that's why I quite sympathize with uh, uh, the solution which was most probably proposed by Merkel in this phone call. And I think it will be uh, to the benefit of, of, of the whole story. Yeah, when uh, I was uh, speaking with uh, Jarosław Walkowicz one week ago about exactly this, is this issue, we thought maybe that can be something what can bring us uh, closer, Germany and uh, Poland. Uh, what would you say? What, what would you say, um, Cornelius Ochman? Is it still uh, something this crisis on uh, Polish Belarusian border that can bring Poland and Germany closer together? Thank you very much. Uh, if I could start with an explanation that uh, currently uh, the German government is, uh, is a, in a very complicated situation. On the one hand, we have a still an acting chancellor, Angela Merkel. We have an acting minister of interior, uh, Mr. Seehofer. On the other side, we have uh, coalition uh, uh, which uh, is still in progress and uh, it's uh, such a situation uh, it's a very difficult not only for the acting government but for the future coalition from this point of view it's uh, uh, really important to uh, pick up the uh, voices from uh, different uh, parties so on the one hand uh, Mr. Seehofer, who uh, visited Warsaw and uh, gave uh, full support to the position of the Polish government. On the other hand, uh, Chancellor Merkel uh, uh, calling uh, uh, two times uh, Mr. Lukashenko and uh, a lot of fake news about these calls, information about uh, uh, refugees, who are welcomed in, in Germany. On the other side, we have uh, a, a representative of the Green parties, uh, uh, 
who are really strong regarding uh, uh, Polish behavior on the border and so on. So in my eyes, it, it's a very complicated situation. A lot of internal uh, political messages from different parties in Germany. So from this point of view, we should uh, wait uh, for in the next in two, three weeks, we will have a new German government. Nobody knows who will be the Minister of Interior. Nobody knows at the moment, uh, or nobody is sure who will take over the Minister of Foreign Affairs. So from this point of view, I cannot answer uh, your question in a, in a, in a uh, clear, with a clear uh, position. And I uh, think that we should focus on a, on a, a current uh, um, uh, steps or uh, uh, a clear messages from the Minister of Interior and, and uh, uh, still acting Chancellor Angela Merkel. Would you say that Chancellor Olaf Scholz, uh, um, and he is going to be the Chancellor for 99%, uh, so would you say that he uh, won't uh, call Lukashenko uh, uh, like Angela Merkel did? I think it's uh, very difficult for him to, uh, to, to do it. So he is probably thankful to uh, Angela <laughs> Merkel that she did it and she tries to solve her problem in the last days of, uh, of, of her activity as a chancellor. And uh, uh, the position of uh, uh, the future chancellor uh, would be uh, created in, 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 in the next week in the new government. And uh, it's the problem for, for, for the German uh, government. It's a problem and I think it's a, it's a main problem for the European Union. We have uh, a, a, a difficult period in Germany uh, between uh, elections and the creation of a new government. We have, uh, uh, act we have still in France a president uh, uh, who is in an election campaign. And maybe it's a reason why the uh, refugees are on the EU border and why they're on the Polish border and not on the Lithuanian border. As you remember, in the summertime, uh, a lot of re refugees came to Lithuania and uh, uh, such a development didn't influence the position of the European Union. And currently, uh, refugees at the Polish border created a lot of tensions, not only Polish Belarusian tensions, but uh, tensions inside the European the European Union, and I think it's uh, one of of the reasons that we are in the uh, 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 time in between a still uh, leadership a clear leadership in the European Union and and a future one. Yeah, but do you understand, uh, Colonel Ochman, this disappointment on the Polish side that Angela Merkel has called uh, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, done uh, twice Alexander Lukashenko, and done Warsaw and Mateusz Morawiecki? Yeah, of course, I can understand the Polish uh, reactions, but uh, on the diplomatic level, there was a communication between uh, Germany and Poland, and uh, the Polish government has been informed about uh, strategy. And uh, one of the problems is uh, uh, is is the current is the current uh, situation in 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 Germany. But I hope that we could overcome this this problems. The visit of uh, Mr. Seehofer in Warsaw is, in my eyes, uh, the right step in this direction. And I hope that there will be a better communication in the future. Uh, Jonas Prin, what is your view on uh, uh, that uh, situation from uh, uh, German-Polish cooperation and from Russian cooperation? This is something what uh, you're doing, um, especially the cooperation between Germany and, and Russia. So uh, do you see uh, now, uh, by solving this problem uh, on the Polish-Belarusian uh, border, more cooperation between our bo uh, bo uh, two countries or more disappointment? Well, that's a difficult question in my eyes. So first of all, 
the situation looks quite similar from the first moment, uh, as we had the situation in 2015. Lots of uh, people from outside of Europe wanting to enter uh, the Schengen area. But obviously, this situation now is very different uh, from our situation six years ago. Um, hereby, we have two mixing situations. The one is the overall migration problem we see in the uh, European Union for the last years, and also like the distribution of uh, refugees, of uh, migrants, um, like is uh, all these questions, is it uh, legal, is it illegal uh, for them to enter, and so on. And on the other hand, we see the overall um, bigger scope, the bigger conflict between the EU and uh, Russia, and maybe Belarus um, on the two sides, and also in between uh, yeah, like Germany and uh, Russia, and especially some, some people within the government. Still, um, for us, it was like for us as, as a Druk organization, and maybe as uh, like as for me as a re representative of uh, a young uh, generation, is that facing uh, the bilateral, um, um, the bile bi bilateral. Uh, country level is something that we didn't expect at the first time, because from our view, this was something uh, more for a, uh, the European Union, more for uh, solving as a whole, and not like uh, there's still the question why, uh, and uh, also to the speaker before me, um, why Poland is such strongly focusing on uh, Germany to help. Obviously, Germany is ready to help in this, but uh, some slogans which Angela Merkel said before were already some years old. So um, there's still and there's still the question why uh, like this is not a problem to be solved on a like more supranational level. When it comes to the bilateral relations between Germany and uh, Poland, this is only a crisis reaction that we see here. This is nothing. Um, maybe this can deal as a, as a role model if the whole situation turns out to be positive. But from what we can see just right now, this is only one aspect of a long um, chain of like, um, like reasons why this situation came the way it was. And preventing this from the first moment should be something which uh, politicians and which governments should deal with right now to prevent this in the future. So maybe this can deal as a role model, but it is uh, more is like is something that happened because of the lack of prevention in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, the Polish government rejects uh, the cooperation with Frontex, uh, the closer cooperation with Frontex. Is it something that you understand? Mm. Something that I can understand in particular is uh, that uh, Poland refuses to uh, take responsibility, uh, give over responsibilities to a supranational uh, European organization, which maybe does not deal directly with the interests of uh, the Polish government, which uh, represents obviously the Polish people. So the, I can understand it, but. Um, the problem itself does not lie in uh, the design of Frontex. It does not uh, like it's more a substantial problem within uh, the governments, uh, within the Polish government and the European Union, in my opinion. Okay, uh, uh, Pavel uh, Behrendt, uh, Cornelius Ochman said that uh, the German, the current German, uh, the acting German government right now under Ang Angela Merkel is divided on that issue, but uh, the Polish public opinion is divided as well because we have a different position between the government and between the opposition on that uh, issue. And one uh, of the points uh, is exactly this Frontex issue. Um, uh, when you follow the situation with your global uh, perspective, uh, do you think was it wise from the Polish side to reject uh, the help and closer cooperation with Frontex? Uh, no, I don't think it would. It was uh, a good idea to reject. Uh, first of all, fr what Frontex, in my opinion, should uh, concentrate on is to create a joint uh, 
let's say, border command that would integrate and control what's going on on the Poland border, not only of Poland with Belarus, but also Lithuania and Latvia, because the crisis is ongoing on the whole EU border with uh, Belarus. What is uh, more astonishing that uh, this is what uh, Mr. Ochman um, had mentioned earlier, that there is huge problem in communication, not only between uh, in Berlin and Warsaw, what is uh, very hard influenced by internal politics in Poland and in Germany, but also some pro other problems in communication between uh, Warsaw, Berlin and uh, Brussels. So current uh, narration is that uh, phone calls uh, from uh, Chancellor Merkel were not uh, consultated uh, with uh, Polish government, but uh, Tuesday, as two days ago, uh, Vice Foreign Minister Jabłoński in RMF FM told that uh, Berlin and Paris uh, consultated uh, actions towards uh, Belarus and Russia with Poland. So now we have quite uh, irky. The situation. Uh, what more I want to I want to say is uh, quite common opinion in the security experts community or in the internet language, uh, internet yeah, security bubble, both in Germany and Poland, uh, there are many people uh, who say that okay, but the first migration crisis was in 2015, and already. Then there were questions if we are prepared for a situation that uh, Belarus or Russia, so Mr. Putin and Lukashenko, use uh, migration or channel the migration streams uh, towards the Polish border uh, to extend pressure on the whole European Union. We had uh, for whole six years to prepare for such a scenario, and it was not some science fiction, but uh, it proved to be uh, very real. And honestly speaking, uh, on the both national level uh, in Poland, in Germany, as well as a uh, European level, nothing has been done uh, to counter such a uh, mm, challenge. Uh, our situation. So, and the uh, one of question is why. What is the answer? Probably, uh, as I would suggest, that there were and there were always much more important issues in internal politics or yeah, in Germany, Poland, other European countries, and EU had other problems, but. Uh, the other uh, answer is uh, uh, not so good to, to us that uh, simply most of the political allied in Europe, this points also to uh, Germany and Poland, uh, does not think in a strategic, or let's say geostrategic, geoeconomic, geopolitic categories. And uh, yes, allies in Russia or China are thinking in such categories. And here is the main problem. Very good. We are going to talk about it. But I think this issue is so complicated because it's not just about this border crisis, I would say, not really migrants crisis, but it's about our relationship uh, uh, with Russia and uh, our uh, uh, strategy on migration policy. And here we have a uh, huge differences between uh, Poland and uh, Germany. Uh, so uh, then let's uh, talk about uh, this uh, uh, Russian policy of uh, the next uh, uh, government in uh, Germany. Cornelius Ochman, what can we expect from the Chancellor uh, uh, Olaf Scholz? Um, he is from Social Democrats. And as you know very well, this is always uh, something in Poland that uh, we are very, uh, very, um, how to say, um, carefully uh, looking 
understanding what the Germans are doing with the Russians. So uh, uh, would you say that uh, uh, should the Poles uh, be worried about uh, the next uh, policy uh, on Russia under Chancellor uh, Scholz? So we will see here more cooperation. I don't think that uh, 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 the Poles uh, 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 should... Uh, uh, be aware about uh, German uh, foreign policy and the relations with Russia. But uh, first of all, I think the current situation in a Polish Russian border is first of all a human tragedy. A human tragedy because the people who are on the border, they uh, uh, have been Painted by the uh, uh, Belarusians, uh, and uh, there are thousands of, 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 of people, of human beings, few of them uh, uh, died in, 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 uh, 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 on this border. And uh, the last information 10,000 of these refugees came from Belarusia to Germany, and they are current in. A German refugee camps. So we have the problem uh, 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 in, in, in Germany. I don't know how many people are in Belarusia, how many oh, in Lithuania, there are four, three, four to 5,000 people in refugee camps in, in, in Lithuania. So there is, first of all, a human tragedy and the approach of Chancellor Merkel and the reason for uh, a call with uh, Lukashenko was to solve this uh, human uh, tragedy. The another level is the geopolitical uh, challenge, a challenge for the European Union. And from this point of view, it's a, it's a big problem that after five, six years of discussion about the uh, 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 strategy, we do not have a strategy of the European uh, Union. And I don't think that, that the change of the government in, in Germany uh, will create a, a new European uh, strategy. We have an old uh, Dublin agreement, and this Dublin agreement uh, did not work any anymore. And uh, we should try to create a new strategy in the European Union, how to deal with refugees. It's not only a problem on the refugees in Belarusia. We have 100,000 of young people in Africa. We have a conflict in Near East. We have a, a, a con conflict and a human strategy in Afghanistan. And all these people are on the way to the European Union. For these reasons, we should try to create a European strategy. And I hope, and I can only hope, that the new German government will actively participate in the creation of the, of the European solution for this uh, refugee uh, strategy, to create a strategy for, for, for refugees, because it's not a problem of Polish border, Polish Belarusian border. It's a common European uh, problem. For sure. And without a solution, we cannot uh, think about uh, po we cannot think positively about the, the uh, future of the whole European Union. But this is the point which makes this uh, crisis on the border so complicated because you're saying about refugees, Polish government uh, uh, is saying about migrants. Uh, and this is quite important when we're speaking about migration uh, policy. Uh, if uh, the people, they are, uh, they are on the border, they are migrants and uh, refugees. And the question is, of course, how can we uh, know that before to talk to them? This is another question uh, because we need to prove that if they are migrants on the, or they are uh, refugees. Uh, but but my question was about Russia. What can we expect from uh, the Social Democrats uh, Chancel uh, in Berlin? Um, do you think that uh, the new government, traffic light government, will change uh, the policy on Russia? You know, the foreign policy or the policy towards Russia is uh, really, really complicated. I don't think that we can expect any changes in the, in the first years of the uh, of, of this new government 
The new government in Germany will focus on the solution of internal pro uh, problems in, in Germany. And uh, the relation to Russia are not on the on 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 on, on the highest uh, highest level. Of course, there is a, 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 a energy policy. It's a relation between the internal policy. We are still in an given that we that the old government decided to to to, to close. The coal mines in in the next uh, few years, in the uh, year 2000, uh, uh, in the next year we will close our atomic power stations and so on. It will create a lot of tensions regarding the energy policy, and in this context, uh, uh, energy supply from Russia is 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 a very uh, important thing. But I cannot mm, answer your question if. There will be changes in 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 the next month or in the next year. Yeah, but some people saying that uh, that what we see on the Belarusian Polish border, what we see on Russian Ukrainian borders, there's more and more Russian troops there. So this is uh, like uh, Vladimir Putin, President Putin wants to um, wants to prove uh, the next German Chancellor uh, uh, how far can he go uh, in the eastern of uh, Ukraine. Uh, do you believe in that theory, or this is like a very attractive theory, but uh, not really not really something? What I... I agree that uh, there is a very uh, good time for uh, Mr. Putin to uh, check uh, the position not only of Germany. As I think more important, much more important is a, a U.S. position and a visit of uh, different American decision makers in in Moscow or a meeting between Mr. Uh, Blinken and Ms., uh, ministers Blinken and Kuleba in, 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 in Washington gave a clear sign to the, uh, to the Russian side that there is a really high price for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, Russian-Ukrainian uh, conflict. But the world is much more complicated in the year 2021 than it was 30 years ago. So there is not a question how the German new government will behave in the next months or years. There is a much more, uh, there is a challenge for the Western world and the still US is a leading uh, country in this context. So please don't create uh, such a high expectation regarding the new German government. This government will focus on uh, internal uh, politics, internal challenges, and uh, 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 they will need uh, much more time for uh, new steps in the foreign policy than we expect. And Vladimir Putin can use it for uh, his goals, but you're saying that, of course, uh, that that Putin wants to prove uh, and check uh, Joe Biden, uh, but actually Germany has a very leading role in this Ukrainian-Russian uh, conflict in Minsk agreement and so on. So this is this is like uh, I think the question to to answer, Doctor uh, Gurka Winter. How do you see that? Uh, um, can Vladimir Putin uh, now uh, checking uh, the next German Chancellor Olaf Scholz? Uh, how far? How uh, let uh, Olaf Scholz uh, him? Uh, how let, uh, how far can he go under uh, chancellorship uh, of Olaf Scholz uh, in Germany? Well, of course, uh, we um, may speculate how far uh, this this thing would go, and knowing Putin, uh, we can. Uh, extrapolate from the previous uh, cases in history then, uh, that he will be testing uh, as much as he's testing uh, President Biden, actually. Uh, because all this uh, migration crisis, first of all, are short, and uh, I do not believe uh, that it wasn't somehow uh, coordinated uh, uh, between uh, Moscow and uh, Minsk, uh, first of all. Uh, so, uh, so we also cannot exclude the scenario that migration crisis was intended only to be some uh, kind of uh, fog around this border uh, to cover what is going at uh, Eastern Ukrainian border. So uh, 
uh, the good response from the West and uh, 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 right uh, response uh, from the United States and Biden ad ad administration showed that this test thing was in vain. Yes, because uh, nobody, uh, 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 nobody was hiding that, hello, we know what are you going to do. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, our migration crisis, we call it migration crisis, but it may be something really bigger. So uh, Putin got, I, I guess Putin got a message. Uh, uh, since uh, uh, UK and uh, since US and UK and then EU uh, pointed that uh, uh, we will not allow, uh, will not allow to invade Ukraine again, and we see your uh, military buildup along along the border. Uh, we see uh, that uh, you are not withdrawing after Zapad, which we expected. Yes, many expert under, uh, uh, experts underlined that uh, the serious military buildup which we witnessed uh, uh, in the in the beginning of the year is just because they uh, have the regular. Uh, uh, military drills, which proved not to be true, and uh, so uh, so I guess uh, yes, Putin was uh, testing uh, by the is testing by the administration, and uh, probably in the same vein he will test uh, uh, future uh, German government. And from the Polish point of view, what's important because I, I may only discuss uh, Polish view on that issue. So, uh, and to, to our German friends, yes, our message is that uh, we are really extremely sensitive uh, about any kind of resetting relations with Russia. Uh, uh, it didn't work. Uh, history of the last decade proved that it didn't work. Uh, I remember a very heated debate, uh, debates uh, with uh, my German counterparts on many different occasions after Georgia. And then, uh, and, uh, and this reset, which was done both by US administration, by Obama, and, and also German government, German experts. I remember uh, that, uh, uh, I mean, proving that, uh, or rather warning uh, at that time, yes, because it was after 2008 that uh, he will not stop, yes, that Russia will not stop, uh, Russia will make another mess. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I remember what was the reaction of, of, of German experts. They, they just wanted, to, uh, you know, the, the, they were, uh, the intention was to, to, put, to put the whole dirt under the carpet and not to discuss uh, uh, it uh, in more detail. Uh, and uh, in 2014, uh, 2014 proved that we were right, yes, that it's not about our uh, Russophobia, as, as we are uh, codenamed, yes, uh, for, for, for years, uh, but it's about the real uh, security risk uh, 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 in the, the whole eastern flank. And uh, Ukraine proved that, uh, that we, Poles, were right in 2008, yes, that we cannot reset with, uh, uh, with uh, Russia. And uh, I guess that American administrations, and I'm not only, I'm not talking about the obvious Trump, yes, approach, but uh, also Biden doesn't seem to be so much rethink, and it was also a concern here in Poland. So, yeah. uh, so, so I guess that US got, they learned a lesson. And uh, I hope that Germany will, will also follow the same path, yes, the same line of thinking about that. Mm -hmm. You're saying, uh, Dr. Gurka Winter, that we, the Poles, were right uh, on uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. But what is exactly our solution? Uh, uh, what is the solution of the Polish diplomacy? Uh, how, uh, what we proposing? How can we solve the problem on the eastern border between uh, uh, Ukraine's? Uh, well, our line is quite clear. Uh, we have uh, international agreements, we have international law, we have international conventions and uh, uh, many documents on which uh, the whole security architecture is built. Uh, after the Second World War and Russia, uh, uh, Russian Federation as a successor of 
of uh, Soviet Union uh, must comply, yes, because they uh, uh, um, they must uh, comply with all obligations uh, which stems from international treaties and international law. So until they not withdraw from breaking this law, and uh, uh, we have, uh, we, we, it's not only Georgia, Ukraine, but it's also withdrawing from. Uh, uh, treaties, yes, withdrawing from INF, withdrawing from OCE, uh, uh, not allowing the military process, military buildup, all this integration with Belarus, uh, uh, military integration, making this process completely untransparent when we cannot send our OSCE observers, yes, which was a good castle, a good tradition to have uh, eyes uh, both in the East and also in the West uh, uh, in terms of transparency. So until we don't see any signal from Putin uh, that he is stepping back with his uh, uh, trial to regain his uh, Russia's sphere of influence, because he's all, uh, openly declaring yes, that uh, Russia will rebuild uh, its sphere of influence. So until we uh, don't see any signal of uh, goodwill, uh, we we cannot uh, try to approach him uh, in a sense that uh, well let's let's have a talk yes let's have another uh, negotiation about uh, uh, this or that uh, I mean the policy of sanctions is quite okay uh, if it doesn't uh, work there is a whole list and uh, it was even published by uh, Jakub Yanda I guess uh, last week on Twitter that there is the we have the, the really a uh, uh, big book of uh, what uh, still can be implemented if there is political will uh, to implement it in the west okay. so we still have instruments and but until uh, uh, until the moment putin will know uh, show a sign of goodwill uh, nobody should try to approach him uh, Jonas Prin, you said that that you, you represent uh, represented uh, the new uh, German uh, generation. So um, uh, you heard uh, for sure about uh, these uh, differences uh, on uh, Nord Stream two between Poland and uh, Germany. Uh, do you understand, as a young generation, German generation, our uh, disappointment um, on German's position on that uh, project. Germany uh, has uh, lost uh, many trust in Poland because of Nord Stream and Nord Stream 2. Yes, I can totally understand this. Uh, I, to be honest, in this whole conflict, um, I can understand all different sides because um, everybody has uh, their interests. Um, the Polish people, the Russian government, the Germans uh, to have like an um, independent uh, cooperation between uh, the state of Germany and um, like uh, Russia as a supplier for uh, natural gas. So um, still, I see it right now that it's a, a mistake which was uh, done in the like in 2008, 2007, when uh, the cooperation started. And I think even before uh, when North Stream 1 was established, uh, that um, this whole uh, concept was like a big mistake with the, uh, with taking not into account the arguments and the interests of uh, neighbors, um, not only Poland, but also um, other partners from uh, the eastern border of Germany and uh, like from Eastern Europe. And uh, uh, Vatican, yeah. And there is a difference in Germany between uh, young and and old, let's say, generation on older generations on Russia uh, policy. First of all, I'd like to mention um, that the people who are now in their teenage years, twenties, maybe early thirties, see. Russia and also Poland from very different perspective due to the fact that uh, we were always able to travel to like meet people to study to have like see the, both countries from our own perspective like uh, just uh, for, for myself I, I made my first impression in Poland in like ninth grade in a student uh, exchange in high school um, I studied also in in Moscow and um, Therefore, I think there's like a much more direct connection between uh, both people. And therefore, um, you maybe have this old, old style East-West thinking. 
of maybe the generation of my father, my grandfather, which they still have, because in maybe their uh, hats, there is still um, an iron curtain in between. And they maybe do not see it, uh, like do not see also Poland being part of more the center of Europe and not like an Eastern country, the same as Czech Republic, for example. So yeah. obvious, obviously there's a, like a problem a difference, yeah. Yeah, but this is this is very nice what you're saying. But uh, I was asking uh, about Russia. Uh, uh, yeah. Is it a difference between a young and older generation in Germany on Russia uh, position or Russia uh, policy? Yeah, it's the same. Like, um, in my opinion, like it, it, not the same, but in a similar way. Um, that, uh, for example, I had a discussion recently uh, with uh, yeah some members of my family who were trained in a German army. Uh, which is now an army of obviously of uh, volunteer um, people. Uh, back then, um, almost everybody had to go. Back then, uh, in like the end of 80s, Russia, the Russian Federation, or uh, before the Soviet Union, was still the enemy. Was regarded as the enemy. Was like uh, in the in the army, and not not only there. And uh, therefore, I think um, the view on on Russia maybe sticked in some um, people's heads, which is still. Mm, maybe which is still the children of uh, the Cold War to see Russia as the evil. And I think from uh, our talks uh, from uh, in Druk and our Druk forums, we also have uh, like a trilateral forum, which is our longest lasting uh, event. Um, we meet with Polish, Russian and German participants. And we can see that uh, there's like a, like a big wish also for openness, a big uh, wish for vision. And this we cannot see from uh, other generations, uh, that particular. Yeah, but but uh, Germany, Poland, on Russia, it's not just the young generation, but Russia is today Vladimir Putin. And okay. would you say that the young uh, generation in Germany uh, uh, see um, uh, Vladimir Putin um, with uh, more openness than the older generation? Could you specify what you mean with that? Yeah, that 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 you see uh, Vladimir Putin's policy. Um, you are more friendly to, to to Vladimir Putin's policy than the the older generation. This is what you're saying that uh, the young ge generation in Germany is uh, uh, looking at Russia with more openness than the older one. Ah, well, no, this is not what I meant. Um, I was talking uh, totally about. Uh, Society, Be, yeah, society being open for the country, being open for the, for the you know uh, overall uh, culture, literature, traditions of the country, uh, having the ability and the wish to also travel there and see it with your own eyes. But uh, this doesn't mean at all that uh, any younger generation in Germany uh, is seeing um, Vladimir Putin's uh, policy more tolerant than other ones. Mm -hmm. Definitely not. And uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, policy on Ukraine, how do you see that? The war in Donbas, annexation of Crimea. How much time do we have? <laughs> One minute. <laughs> um, Is it so complicated to judge? I think from all I've heard, um, from all I see, um, we also, by the way, have a, a youth Normandy talk um, coming up very soon with, with uh, Ukrainian, Russian and French and German participants where we exactly tackle this problem from all we can see now from a German youth uh, perspective is that it was an illegal annexation happening, um, maybe under uh, like an election happening on Crimea with military pressure in March uh, 2014. So-called referendum, yes. Yes, and um, also uh, everything happening in Donbass is uh, 100% uh, like um, against the laws, all countries, uh, whether in the United Nations or in the Council of Europe have been um, uh, accepted to. Yeah, uh, Pavel Berendt, we can speak because we are in a German Polish context, so we can speak like for days and months about uh, Russia, but let's speak about another leading country, uh, People's Republic of uh, China, you're a great expert on that issue. So uh, uh, would you expect uh, one single policy, maybe not on the European level, but on a Polish German uh, bilateral level? Is it possible that uh, Germany and Poland will uh, take the same strategy on China? I know. Um, currently, I don't believe that. Uh, 
And right now, we in Germany, we are witness to the great uh, discussion, the great debate, what the future China policy should be. And it is, yes, really complicated issue because, you know, for example, the Greens uh, advocate a more uh, values-based, uh, more um, resolute uh, policy towards uh, the People's Republic of China. It uh, does not necessarily uh, go in the direction of full uh, agreement with the United States, uh, but uh, still yeah, it, is, it has this, some flavor of containment policy. And we have to, to remember that uh, Germany uh, is under pressure not only from Washington, but also from Japan, Australia and India to take more firm uh, and resolute stance uh, on what Beijing is doing. We mean here this uh, human rights issues, the border conflicts that China has nearly with all its neighbors uh, in the sea border and south borders, especially Japan, Vietnam, and India. But on the other hand, uh, there is uh, still a quite strong lobby, current coalition represented in uh, social democrats and uh, fdp uh, that argues to, to try to uh, keep the stance steady as she goes so well, let's concentrate on be on business uh, don't uh, involve much into politics uh, what honestly speaking is impossible to uh, help uh, we even in German business and industrial community, uh, a split. So the big uh, corporations like Volkswagen, Siemens, BASF uh, want to keep the things uh, as they are. So concentrate on business, even if it uh, brings the uh, and even if results are not so good for the rest of the German industry, so this narrow-minded uh, corporate uh, interest. On the other hand, uh, nearly three years ago, uh, Bund Deutsche Industrie, so it's the biggest uh, organization of German industrialists uh, that groups uh, small and middle uh, enterprises, uh, issued uh, paper and then with advices to the future German governments what steps should be taken and there was quite clearly pointed that China is uh, a very attractive market a very good partner to German industry but uh, on the same hand uh, they are very dangerous uh, competitor or uh, let's say bluntly enemy uh, taking the market segments uh, or aiming to take the market segments that were until now dominated by German companies. Mm -hmm. But would you say that uh, the Polish government is more critical on China than the German one? Would you say that the President Duda is uh, speaking longer with the President Xi about human rights in China and uh, uh, people in Xinjiang than Chancellor Merkel? Um, this is a good uh, question. Uh, right now, we have uh, to admit one thing, that during the years, uh, uh, China was in many cases below the radar of Polish politics. As, and of course, there were attempts from both sides to level up the, the bilateral relations, uh, but uh, Yes, so honestly speaking, uh, to China, this main partner in Europe uh, is Germany. And Poland is, uh, uh, let's say, by the way. So if you want to 
go to Germany via railway or via roads, you have to go, the, the best route is via Poland. Uh, so in this sense, uh, Poland was uh, important to China, but uh, uh, yes, to, to both sides, Polish and uh, the Chinese one, uh, this, um, yeah, they were some hopes, but they were no fulfilled. Yes, as uh, I mentioned, it, uh, to China, more important is Germany. Uh, to Poland, uh, the more important were always uh, relations, yes, this uh, eastern direction and relations with Brussels and Washington. So uh, China was. Uh, not uh, uh, not enough attention was paid to China. But what is the answer on my question? Would you say that the Polish government is more critical uh, uh, on China than the German uh, government? Then would you say that the President Duda is speaking longer about human rights with President Xi than Chancellor Merkel does? Uh, let's say that... Uh, um, Okay, President Duda may talk it longer about uh, it with uh, President Xi, uh, but Chancellor Merkel talked about this uh, more often. <laughs> so summa summarum, probably it took a longer time, and uh, we still are not sure what uh, is uh, Polish agenda. If Warsaw wants to build closer relations uh, with China, like uh, let's say Hungary, or go the way Lithuania, show it in uh, recent uh, months that take more harsh stance, uh, elevating human rights, uh, political issues, uh, or take some completely different uh, approach. Um, in Germany, there is yes, still problem good that uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel uh, spoke even this few uh, minutes or okay, so few quarters of time um, with President Xi about uh, the human rights issue. But uh, yes, in Germany, it is uh, still the problem that uh, when politicians who often really want to uh, start uh, discussing harsh much harder this issue of uh, human rights in relations with China, they meet opposition of um, business and industry, which say, okay, you may talk about human issue, uh, human rights issues with China, but not too much because it uh, simply can have a negative uh, impact uh, on our business. Yeah, uh, Jonas uh, Prin, I see uh, you wanted to add uh, something. And how would you answer the question? Is it possible that we have this uh, a single uh, common uh, position on China, uh, Poland, and Germany? I personally think there's no other way in just having an unique response of the European Union, maybe, or also of the uh, like coalition of the willing uh, partners to face uh, China. Um, in general, but it highly but, depends. But we say that for years, yeah. but it, it, yes, we say yes, that for but years, and there is no single policy in China and European Union. That that is true. That is true. Um, of course, uh, right now uh, looking at Germany, it depends highly on what we will find out, um, how the uh, government will be uh, organized. We already um, like touched upon this point in our discussion, and I would like to comment a little bit more on this, and then can, I can an answer your question. So what we right now see is a very like much like a black box. So there are very few information coming out of all these uh, discussions between the three parties. Uh, we do not uh, hear that much, but of course we know uh, the results from the election. So we know what will be the order of the distribution of ministries. And um, the big question that we see right now is if the Green Party, which is the second biggest uh, after the election, so they will have the first choice of ministry. The question is, are they going to make the same mistake as they did in 1998 when Joschka Fischer, who became Minister of Foreign Affairs for the, for the Green Party then, um, took the uh, ministry and therefore may have, like put on a weak, uh, the big weakness on all other uh, like uh, ministries the Green Party could take. 
Yeah, but, so the, the, but big, the liberals did the same mistakes 2009. <laughs> with may, may, maybe they did. Maybe they did. But now we have a three uh, coalition. So uh, we have a, a new picture. So the question is, uh, for the Green Party now, are, is uh, Annalena Baerbock fulfilling her dream of finally becoming uh, the uh, foreign minister of Germany? Or is the Green Party really willing to, to do something, uh, especially uh, concerning tackling the um, climate change? Because then they will probably either take the Ministry of Finance, uh, a new uh, like mm, climate change minist uh, ministry, which could be um, like evolved, uh, including uh, agriculture, maybe digital. Okay, or... but does it have so big impact on China policy? Yes, in, in, my, in my opinion, yes. Because, um, however... What we will see is either the uh, uh, the FDP or the Green will take over the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, obviously the um, they will talk with uh, one voice as a government. Um, but what we can see is it will be much more uh, value based. So, however, and uh, either the FDP, the Liberals, or uh, the Green Party will act much more offensive, uh, from my perspective, on both Russia and China. And what they want to have, what they cannot uh, like um, put in the future is uh, to ask uh, neighbors for a common strategy tackling this. Because uh, either with the European Union or with a coalition of willing uh, partners. Okay, Dan, you're saying that the foreign ministry is making uh, China policy, not the economy ministry. <laughs> um <laughs> this is what you said. That's a, that's okay, okay. <laughs> but what is but, but because uh, Pavel uh, Baron said something else, so that was I want to confront you with with that mm -hmm. uh, with that opinion. But w w what about uh, the answer on my question? Is it possible that Germany and po and, and, and Poland will have the same uh, common position on China, or um, not in in the next years? Since I I believe that uh, the as I mentioned, the value-based policy will uh, increase in its importance. Um, there will be not like no influence, but less, much less influence, like a, a little less influence of uh, the lobbies, especially when concerning um, like uh, automotive uh, industry in Germany, because um, what we already see is that the EU is taking more steps towards uh, like. Mm, limiting the access of, of other countries into the European uh, inter interior uh, market, internal market. So um, measures such as environmental measures and social uh, will have much more importance as well. This is part of the overall value-based um, foreign policy. And therefore, I think that um, there will be a stronger voice coming from either the Kanzleramt uh, from the chancellor or from the ministry of foreign affairs but then the um economy itself and this okay. will be all obviously uh something together with poland and other partners uh, Cornelis Ochman, how do you see this uh, uh, development uh, on uh, China between Poland and uh, Germany? And uh, um, uh, there is uh, there is any strategy, or they are just geschäfts, uh, uh, just uh, uh, businesses? In my eyes, we don't have any strategy in the European Union towards China. We have different interests. Uh, a German position based on economic interest, but it doesn't matter in my eyes. In my eyes, the uh, main uh, uh, challenge is uh, in the relations US-China. And uh, uh, the European Union can only uh, decide if they, uh, the European Union will follow US or uh, will, tr will try to create our own uh, policy. And if we analyze the uh, global development and uh, especially in uh, security terms, uh, a new uh, construction AUKUS where uh, Great Britain and Australia are uh, going together with the uh, United States. And on the other side, a decision of the Polish uh, government to buy the newest uh, F-35 uh, uh, planes or the uh, uh, um, American tanks, I see a big challenge for the European Union in, 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 in this context. On the one hand, we have a decision 
by made by the uh, on the ministerial level to develop a European uh, security and defense structure on the other side a decision of the Polish government to buy more and more American uh, equipment and uh, in this context uh, the next years will create a lot of uh, new challenges in a global uh, in a global uh, terms uh, i don't uh, see uh, at the moment uh, uh, a chance for the european union to create a new uh, china policy but i hope i'm wrong and uh, after the elections in 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 france we will uh, hopefully have a better uh, cooperation between Germany and France regarding uh, uh, the uh, future of the European Union, because in the last years, not all challenges uh, uh, have been um, uh, linked with uh, uh, German-French uh, cooperation. And I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm really skeptical regarding uh, future, the future of the of the uh, European Union in 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 this context and uh, hopefully a German uh, French Polish cooperation could be uh, increased in the next time because without cooperation in this uh, Weimar triangle I don't see any chance for a uh, a common position of the European Union, not only regarding the China policy, but uh, any other challenges in Europe. Yeah, this is like, it looks like the European Union is trying to stay between China and the United States. Is it uh, something what we can uh, do, Dr. Beata Gurka Winter? Is it uh, a right uh, um, position? If we don't have our own single policy on China, that it's better just to making uh, businesses and interests uh, with uh, Chinese and uh, trying to make uh, geopolitics with the Americans. Well, ideally, uh, of course, uh, it would be uh, great to have a common strategy on China, as it would be great to have a common strategy. Uh, on uh, African problems and uh, uh, common strategy towards US as the EU is underlining in every strategic document that uh, its ambition is to be a global power. But can we achieve, can uh, we achieve as a German, uh, Germans and Poles, can we achieve uh, something to the European Union? Can we find a common I, strategy between Warsaw and Berlin and then maybe that we are that will be a drive for the whole European Union to make a one single policy on China? Well, I don't think so, because uh, look, uh, my uh, colleagues uh, already underlined that even in Germany, there is no like one view on how to deal with China and uh, if we should sacri sacrifice values for trade. Yes. And in Germany, there, there is also no one point about that, uh, depending on who is representing lobbyists, business, etc., etc. Uh, the, the same is in Poland. Uh, of course, uh, 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 we tend uh, in our foreign policy, when we don't know what to do, we tend to follow US, yes? And there is this question if Poland will be following uh, US in this uh, quite openly hostile approach uh, to China. I don't think it will be the case. Uh, but are we following? Uh, would you say, excuse me for... Uh, no, for, for no. Uh, it, it, we, we don't, we don't, because uh, uh, all, uh, only yesterday we had this uh, very uh, interesting discussion with uh, Robin Dunningan, who is Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for CEE, and we also discussed China uh, in GMF. And uh, uh, I cannot reveal who said it, because it was a Chatham House formula, uh, but it was very clearly and, and openly uh, said to, to Mrs. Uh, uh, Dunigan that uh, do not expect that uh, Germany, but also Poland will follow you uh, your policy on China, which is uh, 
uh, an open rivalry, open hostility, and starting from Trump, yes, because Obama was quite different. But uh, starting from Trump, we have a clear strategy to challenge China on every possible level. So I don't think, and here, uh, Poland and Germany are much closer uh, because I cannot see uh, from our from the point of view of Warsaw and Berlin that uh, we won't challenge Germany and follow US in this regard. So that may be a starting point, yes, for discussion, because also our business is uh, um, uh, benefiting from relations with China. We don't have any kind of uh, uh, any kind of uh, reason to challenge China in such a harsh way as US is doing, apart from some um, issues regarding uh, taking over the critical infrastructure. That's what we have to underline, and uh, it should be both in the interest of Germany and Poland, that we should not allow China to take over our uh, uh, objects of critical infrastructure because it will in, uh, influence our security. And this is clearly the red line. The other red line is, of course, military technologies. Uh, if we uh, want to be cohesive as NATO, because we are not only in the EU, uh, but also in NATO. So we cannot uh, sell sensitive technologies, which are really uh, high tech, yes, uh, to our Chinese counterpart, because it, it, it will absolutely ruin uh, the strength of this alliance. So uh, if we draw this clear red lines, uh, I think that the rest uh, is up to us, yes? Yeah, but, there are but, many uh, other fields that we can cooperate with China and not risk our security. Yeah, but on, on the 5G and Huawei issue, we are on the same side with uh, the Americans, when I understood you uh, right. Yes, it, yes, we consider it uh, as uh, uh, critical, yes, who will be internet provider and who uh, is able to collect data about our citizens and uh, uh, in what way uh, we can be blocked, yes, from uh, accessing to some uh, information and uh, and also we do believe, and uh, maybe Poland is uh, more sensitive to this uh, issue of authoritarian regime, regimes managing data of citizens, because we uh, already survived one authoritarian regime who was following us, maybe not having uh, such tools at its disposal, it was Soviet Union. So, uh, uh, that's what may, uh, what make make a difference between Poland and Germany because we already felt uh, I mean on our skin how, how it may end yes so we are much more strict in this regard. And at the end of our debate, let's talk about the relationship uh, uh, with the uh, United States. Uh, uh, um, Dr. Gurkavinter, do you see that uh, we can cooperate with uh, Germany uh, on uh, that uh, relationship? Um, uh, we know that Trump was our president, uh, Biden is uh, uh, their president. So we have a completely different relation uh, to this both president as a government, uh, let's say. But uh, is it something what uh, will uh, uh, create more um, conflict between our two countries or we will find a common uh, policy uh, on United States? Well, actually, uh, uh, in this, uh, on this level of uh, symbolism, uh, you're right, yes, that uh, Biden is German president, both voted for <laughs> Trump, yes. The Polish <laughs> government, for sure. Well, yeah. yeah, but also many Poles voted, uh, but uh, uh, but um, cl clearly, uh, uh, Biden administration, and we see uh, many signals from Biden administration, and this yesterday's visit of uh, Mrs. Dunningham was also one of them, that uh, uh, Biden administration is trying to approach uh, Poland, yes, Polish government, Polish experts, is trying to uh, make some 
uh, what I would um, call field research, yes, why we are so hesitant about Democrats. Uh, and to the simple answer is that uh, it's about uh, reset, yes. We uh, remember the change in the capital uh, uh, from Republican to Democrats, starting with a reset with Russia and Obama uh, decision to uh, cancel the GBI base of Polish territory was for us a clear sign that uh, Democrats stand to withdraw from obligations which were uh, made by, uh, by Republicans and to withdraw from some military uh, installation, yes, from plans of military installation on Polish territory. So the same was, uh, I mean, the same feeling, the same um, worries uh, uh, were now with this change. But uh, I don't see any signals that uh, up to now uh, that Biden administration will not follow uh, agreements, yes, which we signed with previous administration on military issues. And uh, I think that we just need uh, some more time uh, to prove uh, because of the former reset, we need uh, some time to prove uh, that uh, uh, no, Democrats are not going to, to harm us, yes, uh, in any way. They are not going to withdraw the forces which are deployed here on the eastern flank. Uh, they are not going to cut uh, military assistance uh, uh, in building, in securing the eastern flank. So uh, after uh, this first month, we see that uh, there are no plans of any drastic change, yes, on the eastern flank. So I think that month after month, and now uh, Biden administration behaved very well uh, regarding this uh, border crisis, uh, threatening Putin that it, he doesn't stop, uh, uh, you know, some uh, uh, different moves on Ukrainian border, then US will react uh, very yes. strongly. So uh, there are more signs that we are on the same page and that uh, will, uh, make us closer to Germany also, which is praising uh, Democrats. So so slowly but surely, we will be on the same page, I guess, at the end. The, sa the same direction. <laughs> Jonas yeah. Prin, um, uh, uh, in Poland, we are quite divided uh, country, uh, but there is uh, um, a few things that uh, we have uh, pretty the same um, position. And uh, one of them is that we want to have uh, uh, a more American soldier uh, on our soil. And uh, is it something what would you welcome as a young uh, German generation that uh, the United States uh, is uh, or will uh, send more uh, soldiers uh, to the eastern flank of NATO, how it be called? All right. Um, with regards to the time, I quite uh, try to make it short. Um, no. Uh, to answer the question, no. Um, Germany has a different perspective on Russia than um, Poland does, from my perspective. Because we uh, are closer. <laughs> obviously, uh, you're closer. And um, this explains a lot. Geography in this explains really a lot, um, not just uh, of distance, but also of like uh, geographical factors, you know. And um, there are uh, also quite some studies about this, uh, you know. And uh, anyway. Um, Facing uh, Russia with troops is something that is not uh, seen very well in the German society. This is Even something if the Russians doing that. It looks like um, there's it's a cold war a little bit more shifted to the east. And this is something um, in from the German perspective, which is uh, not favorably seen at all. Um, all uh, like in general, I think uh, there's a very different perspective on um army and uh, on, on war maybe um because uh like peace policy or like a demilitarization uh is is like regarded differently also in poland and uh, also in america uh and germany and um, like from my personal perspective i think there are fundamental problems which like go back to Katyn, which go back to, you know, um, the aftermath of the World War II, uh, which are not eradicated from the Polish-Russian relations. I don't want to, want to tackle them too much now. I just want to say that um, obviously the relations um, between Germany and uh, Russia or Soviet Union were much worse 
um, because of the German side, mostly, um, and uh, also because of, uh, you know, the GDR and so on. But what we saw in the last 30 years was um, from both sides a really strong wish to work on that, to eradicate them as much as possible and to work on this. Same with Poland. German-Polish relations uh, always had a strong focus on that. What I do not see that much is um, such a wish, such a strong impact um, on eradicating these issues between Poland and Russia. Um, wherefore, I think uh, this is a fundamental um, problem which should be tackled uh, in the nearest future. And uh, therefore, I understand the Polish side because Russia is still seen as a direct enemy, um, direct opponent. And maybe, uh, but Germany cannot like does does not does not look similar to this. Maybe not enemy, but a threat for sure. When we see or a threat, war. surely, surely. But um, yeah, I would say more an enemy than a friend. Yeah, but um, uh, you could develop uh, um, in Western Germany because of the security guarantee uh, given you by NATO. And this is something what uh, uh, Poland and the other countries between Germany and Russia uh, want to have, just a guarantee of the security. We are not in 1949 or in the 80s anymore. Um, wherefore, I do believe that uh, the chance of uh, having um, it like military conflict between NATO members. Uh, 1949, Germany, Western Germany was obviously not, not a NATO member, um, and uh, now 2022, um, a possible uh, like military conflict between uh, Russia and uh, Poland is much much uh, like. Uh, it's, it's like non-existent in my opinion of course maybe the rhetoric might suggest but it's not uh, really existing okay cornelius ochman we uh, um uh, see in the european union you know, that many politicians in uh, uh, not just in france but in france especially uh, speaking about european sovereignty uh, european independence uh, strategic autonomy and uh, many people understand that that this is something that we need to be independent from the united states as well on many issues like on the security issue would you say this is something what uh, uh, we uh, share in German Polish community with the French or not? Because we see that Annegret Kam Karenbauer, Defense Ministry of uh, Germany, uh, said to the French actually that uh, this is what you're saying. This is like uh, not really very realistic. We need to cooperate with uh, uh, America very, very close on uh, defense issue and this uh, European sovereignty on defense uh, 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 strategy, defense issue is uh, something what uh, uh, Annegret Kam Karenbauer was not really welcoming what is your point of view of that in my point of view uh, uh, we still need a transatlantic cooperation especially in a current global situation because there is not only a challenge in on the southern flank of europe uh, uh, there are global challenges and without united states we can not play any important role in the in the uh, uh, in the war but but there are of course uh, 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 challenges and 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 uh, uh, areas where the european union should act without United States. So we need a, a, a strategy when we need in the European Union military forces which are ready to uh, intervene in uh, different uh, uh, areas. Uh, as we could uh, see in the last months, for example, Afghanistan, Kabul, the European uh, uh, forces have not been uh, able to organize uh, uh, such an evacuation. We see the situation in, in uh, different uh, countries in uh, Africa. So, of course, we should uh, improve our uh, uh, equipment, a cooperation in the European Union, but not in opposition to United States. Uh, the 
interconnectivity of the European uh, military forces and the United States should be uh, the uh, main challenge for the cooperation U US uh, EU in in the future and I'm sure we will go in in this direction and Pavel Berend, what is your view on German Polish position on uh, America uh, are we uh, uh, so close on uh, that issue than uh, like you are in Szczecin with Germany yeah this is uh, as everyone before me uh, has uh, have said um, this is a quite complicated issue because uh, we have to remember one more thing about this strategic autonomy the trump administration and uh, the biden administration continues it uh, told clearly to european allies you have to defend yourself so it is within your reach it's just a demand from you to spend a bit uh, more money on uh, defense and build more uh, robust uh, military structures and, uh, and this is generally agreed uh, opinion within military and uh, security community uh, the main problem uh is yeah right now germany is uh, uh quite happy uh, with biden but uh, not so much because uh, uh, many people in germany especially in allies consider it trump of some aberrations temporary aberration and hope that if democrats uh, win elections so everything will be back uh, to the normal Sorry, that did not happen. Uh, Biden administration simply has the same demands as Trump administration, but puts and puts them in much more diplomatic and polite form. It makes different, <laughs> and it <Yes>. makes different. <laughs> yeah, and it makes huge yeah. different. But uh, there are yes, still problem that. Uh, what uh, Mr. Green uh, pointed out that there was no uh, rapprochement between Poland and Russia. And we don't speak here about uh, political military issue, um, but uh, yes, in terms of uh, uh, interpeople uh, exchange, uh, cultural exchange, and we have to remember that. Uh, Poland uh, has quite a, a good potential for a soft power uh, in Russia, and that uh, is not used. Uh, on the other side, uh, Germany, there is problem in uh, society and political allies that after the Cold War, uh, they nearly negated the hard power so there are always all the economy culture and uh, using turning to let's say a military power economic statecraft this term is making right now a bigger and bigger uh, career uh, is wrong and so uh, okay we can say that uh, germany in some cases is uh, out of touch with uh, reality when especially Russia and China uh, are not uh, hesitant to use uh, military and economic power to pursue their goals. Yeah, and we ending very on a very traditional way because we have been uh, starting to speak about America, but we ended with Russia uh, in the German Polish context. This is uh, quite uh, tra uh, tradition. Thank you very much for a polite and uh, great uh, debate, uh, Dr. Gurka Winter. Thank you very much, uh, Cornelius Ochman. Thank you very much, um, uh, Julius uh, Print, uh, Jonas Print. Entschuldigung, uh, sorry. Uh, thank you very much uh, for. Uh, this discussion and uh, Pavel Behrendt, thank you very much.